Hi, I'm Patrick. And I'm Liv. And this is the Mach-E Vlog. But this is actually the 2023 Genesis GV70 Electrified Prestige, and we're going to take a look at it now. Let's go. I'm going to preface this. If I don't seem excited, that's because I'm a little sick. Trust me, I'm very excited. This car is awesome. And it's the first matte car that we've ever looked at. Check this out, come get up and close. This is the Makalu gray paint finish and it's matte. Straight from the factory, it looks like this. Or satin, I'd it's, say. It's called matte, but oh. in real life it looks <laughs> satin. I know, it's like called matte, but it's so cool. It is so cool. They don't have really eye-catching crazy colors in their product line. They have this elegant looking logo, elegant colors, everything is like understated, but this finish is phenomenal. It looks really great. There are no fingerprints. It's just, oh my gosh, to me, this car looks absolutely fantastic. Check out the grill. We have this diamond feature here. We have diamonds in the air, air intake down there. And if you're wondering, the car's unlocked, Over right? on the right side, let's uh -huh. see. Yeah, gotta unlock it. There, we, there go. we go. This is where the charge port is. One bad thing about this, like I had not thought about this before. We've been talking about how we love the charge port being here because, and obviously you have your J1772 and then your DC fast charging. And I don't there. like the flaps because these, these they, things look like they're gonna break. They totally quickly. do. And I don't know about you guys, but I would probably just pull them off personally. So let me pop these in quick and show you something I just realized. Um, so Patrick and I were talking about how we like this. This is seamless. It, it just blends back in, right? But um, look at how many bugs there are here. So in oh, order to open it, <laughs> but there's a bug there. I think that's kind of gross. Yeah. So to open the charge port, it's in the bug zone. Just realized this right now. Minor so it's, detail. It's a minor detail, but it's in the bug zone. Other than that, this looks so phenomenal. One Let's of the take a little walk I really around. like these 20 inch wheels look nice, but I like that the brake calipers are painted, but they're painted white. So it's sort of like a little bit of flash, but it's like, it's white. So it's a very subtle. It's the whole vibe of the car. It's understated, it's elegant. It's it's really phenomenal. Like even the, the wheel trim is matte. It looks so cool. Now come over here. We're not gonna go into heavy detail here, but this is really interesting. If you're wondering how to open the trunk, it's right there. It almost looks like it's the button that you would press to like replace the windshield. Give um, it a try, yeah. I think we're close enough with the key. Yeah. So, okay. We have previously judged vehicles on whether you can fit a wheelchair in, but something that we always have is a hula hoop. So now my new test is hula hoop flat or tilted. In the Mach-E, we have to tilt the hula hoop. In the GV70, it can go flat and close, which and is pretty cool. Since we're back here, I'll just point out, there's a 16 amp, 120 volt uh, plug here. I forget how, yeah, there you go. That's how you open it up. So it does have uh, some power in the back. Uh, you know, I think there may be a little bit of additional storage under here. Let's see, how do you open that? Oh, okay. Oh no, this is actually really cool. So that's the privacy screen that you can like pull out and then cover up the rear cargo area. 
And one of the things that I don't like about those is that they get in the way when you actually have something big. But the fact that you can uh, store it under here, that's a really nice thought out option. So I don't know how you get it out. Uh, you have to remove some more stuff to get it out. So that's a little bit of a pain. But the whole idea is like this bar will fit in the recessed areas here and then you could cover up your, your cargo. But then if you need to put in like a big screen TV, you're not like, okay, where do I put the, the privacy screen? The Maki has like it's a fabric one that sort of just, you can hide underneath the floor very easy, but it's very flimsy. And if you have your windows down, it tends to pop out and things like that. So really like that. Uh, there's a little bit of extra storage in the side, but not much. This is basically what you get. So let's go ahead and close this and move somewhere else. All right, so we were just talking about how this is where the GV70 really shines. It is so gorgeous. This is the upgrade. It's the prestige package. So it's about a $6,800 upgrade to get this leather wrapped steering wheel, Napa leather, uh, Napa leather. <laughs> like, well, actually, is this leather? Well, it feels I don't, like leather. No, that, I don't know. It's hard to tell. This is certainly leather. And then if you look up to the headline trim, this is micro suede. And I feel like this area is where you can sometimes tell when vehicles are cheap. So the way that the headliner is wrapped, you can really tell. You know how sometimes it's like, look at people's shoes. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, so no. this is the car's shoes. And this is so plush and well appointed and beautifully tailored. And going back to the dash, like, Sometimes even the stitching, like the stitching looks really nice here. Everything, it's just something about it. Like when we get in, the door sounds solid. It's and so, yeah. it is so solid. And it feels like a command center. You guys know that I drive cross-legged, so it is a little bit too tight for me, but I've been doing just fine. And you can actually pull out and push back the, um, what, what would we call this? The like... The, the thigh knee, support. The thigh support. So and I it's have electronic. Mine, yeah. So I have mine pushed all the way back. There's just a whole ton that you can adjust in this car. And I'm just checking. We don't have that on the passenger side, but that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. The passenger can just kick back. The instrument cluster itself is really fantastic. And I'm not sure if you can see it, but we have it set to three dimensional. It's really, really subtle, but it gives it an almost like OG, like actual physical instrument cluster sort of look. Oh, but there we go. It looks really nice. There's a lot of information that you can get in that screen. Um, and it also has the heads up display. I can't ignore the fact that the aesthetics in here are so fantastic. Everything is brushed metal. If you can see it's brushed metal here and they have this really consistent like oval design theme and these sort of chiseled diamond finish on the side of everything, which is totally reminiscent of the diamonds outside. If you've seen the GV60, there's like a crystal knob or a crystal ball inside it. The GV70 doesn't have that and that's to control the, the drive modes. But if you see on this, um, I guess we call this controllable scroll wheel, whatever, it, it has can, a- It controls the screen It controls there, which we'll get into, but it has a crystallized sort of edge which is totally reminiscent of the GV60. So it has that kind of like funky weirdness, but it's really subtle and understated. Everything again is that sort of brushed aluminum, the satin. And the oval continues to like the glove box as well as like the, the door handles as well. Yeah, it's really, really consistent and absolutely gorgeous. Now the seats themselves are top notch. These are so comfortable. It's ventilated and heated seats. And with the prestige trim, you actually get heated rear seats as well. Really nice upgrade. Um, but the seats are so comfortable and the headrest, I didn't think that a headrest was something that I could partic particularly like, but this one is like concave. So if you have a big head or a lot of hair like me, I don't know. It just feels really comfortable. You know and it's I mean? adjustable. So that's always a good it's thing. It's adjustable. That's really, really nice. The way that you interact with the whole digital system is where it gets a little weird. So this screen is pretty far away. If I'm in my drive mode, I'm comfortable, I'm ready. I'd be cross-legged, but whatever. I can't just tap at the screen. It's too far away. So I have to lean forward. But 
Genesis has made it so that this is your command center. I actually like press the button just by leaning on it. So everything that you do is right here. You can scroll these wheels to select and let's press the home button and go back home and then we can scroll our crystal dial. And it's also like a bit of a joystick. So like it can go up and down and left and right. Oh, I didn't know it was a joystick. Yeah, it's a bit. Yeah, it just took me a while. And I was like, whoa, ooh, that yeah. wobbled. Like, oh, no, it's actually a joystick, which doesn't work on a lot of the screens. But I think like, oh, I just, I see, this is where I don't things. like this. I'm like, I'm on the wrong thing. I want to go EV. And I know you can't see all this. I really love having the indicator camera right in front of you. I, yeah, I never liked that when I first saw it, but in use is actually nice when it's in a good spot. Well, and in this case, I just got, I crossed a bike lane. So it makes me really happy that I can clearly see if there's anyone in the bike lane. Cause I mean, I can still look, but this is like a double, it's an extra, right? It's the extra, yeah. Yeah, it's a little extra boost of Nope, there's definitely no one there. Pedestrian safety. It's like the blind spot warning. You don't like go just because it says it's clear, but it, it means like when it's you, you look and it's clear and there's no blind spot warning, it's extra. Yeah, it's a little extra. Wow, by the way, the AC in this car is very effective. Uh, Patrick and I just switched and the way that you have this turned, I'm like, I'm quite cold. Ah. <laughs> Were you cold? Yeah, but it's, <laughs> I, I've been running warm um, anyway. So, no, if, if uh, those are like the little details I think are really cool to note. Uh, we've been in some other cars and EVs as well. And like the AC seems lacking. This one does not seem Ooh, lacking. It does not. And I, to be totally honest, we had it set to 70 and our house doesn't have AC and we were running around in the house a bit. So when we got in the car, I was like, I'm splurging, I'm going to 68. So hence I'm, I'm feeling a little chilly. Um, but I gotta say, I know that I said, you don't have to have um, electric controlled seats, that manual seats are fine, but it's so nice to just be able to adjust, especially if you sit, switch drivers to just like give a little tweak and mm -hmm. switch a little like I just moved back a little there. And it has, I think three memory positions, two at least. It has two memory positions. Um, I'm not gonna crane to look right now. We're back on that bumpy road that we really like to test on. There's just, it's a terrible road, which is just great for us. And I think this is my favorite car that we've tested so far. Here, yeah. Yeah. We uh, haven't, we haven't, cause we didn't do the EQS here. Yeah, we did not do the EQS, but I mean, come on, can I say my favorite car under 100,000? Because that would yeah. be this. <laughs> and, and, and that's what I'm like struggling with how to convey to you guys, like how much we like this car. And it's not anything that you'll see on paper or the design of it necessarily. I, I think it looks okay design wise. Interior, I love. Um, I wouldn't, I still wouldn't go white, but it... No, my gosh, the white freaked me out so much. I'm resting my very green head on the back right now. And I'm just thinking about, you know, what would this be like after a couple of years of use? Like, would it be green? <laughs> yeah. Um, but I don't know. It, it feels like fantastic materials. This is the, is it called the premium package? Premier? Premier package, I Premier believe. package. It's upgraded. So um, this is leather. Uh, yeah, so I don't know what the, do you know what the base material is like? No, we haven't seen one. At, like, this is the first time we saw one in person. I know they have the gas version, but this is the first time we've seen one of either type. And I, I'm just super impressed. Again, it, like, I wouldn't necessarily compare this to a Model Y because it's sort of like different level of materials. This is a bit more expensive. Um, but if you wanted to justify the expense, I think it's just like the overall feel is hard to convey that. It feels without getting in it. It feels so fantastic. Are we in comfort right now? Uh, yes, I set you to comfort. Before yeah, I it feels down. very comfortable. I mean, this is just the bumpiest road. I can feel uh, the vibrations in the steering wheel because it's it's just not great, and I feel Good so feedback. comfortable. 
Yeah, that is good feedback. Good point. But I feel so comfortable as the driver. I feel so comfortable as the driver and so comfortable as the passenger. Like there's no compromise in the experience. Um, now, like, like Patrick has mentioned, this is obviously the electrified GV70. So there's a transmission tunnel. Um, it's very responsive, by the way. The brake and accelerator, <laughs> very responsive. And you're in two pedal mode. I'm in two pedal mode. I'm, you know what? I've just, I've accepted it. I prefer two pedal. You prefer one pedal, which is kind of great because then we get to experiment and experience and we know that we both have different preferences. This is such a tight turn, um, which you took much tighter than me, much faster. Maybe. I don't I think, think so. <laughs> but this, do you remember taking the 450E back here, the Lexus? Like I, I, I felt like it was, like that's the first time I felt like an EV was top heavy, even though it wasn't. It felt like a, I think we said a boat. It felt, it definitely felt top heavy. This certainly feels cushy and airy and, and just, and lovely and smooth, but it doesn't feel like a boat at all. It does feel like a large car though, but it doesn't feel like a boat, huh? Yeah. Uh, maybe it's like that it's mid balanced or something. Is that what we think? <laughs> well, it's just like, it's just pretty well defined uh, suspension, but it's also like, I think it's the little things like the, the quietness of the cabin um, contributes to how, it, like it, does, it sounds silly, no. but it's like, it doesn't feel like you're flying down this road. It just feels like this, like if we, we could put on some classical music, we let's could. go ahead and turn left here. We'll go out. Okay. Classical music. How about like, jazz see and that break is a is a it's touchy it's responsive and it's touchy i'm not a huge fan of touchy responsive accelerator and brakes but this is like right on the edge of it i would say for me it, yeah the, the accelerator is touchy the brake is a bit touchy um i like it all like it, it again it's just really this is one of I my favorite evs that we've been in yeah uh, of course we love our mach -E. But I don't think this competes with the Mach-E. I think this is uh, Audi Q8 e-tron, Lexus RZ450e. Um, it's less than the Audi, more than the, the Lexus, but this is like a great apportionment of... I'm actually gonna counter that. I think it does compete with the Mach-E because it's a very similar category. It's the same size. Um, our GT Performance Edition has pretty equal power right yeah um and this has really lovely suspension so here's the difference this is a bit more expensive right this is, this is more expensive but um if you and i'm gonna get in the right lane is that cool yeah just get in the cool. right lane and floor it um <laughs> floor it. Yeah, floor it. The, the person behind me wants to floor it okay fine i'll floor it a little um oh gosh they're so far behind yeah. they're so far behind like competing with the Maki, I think somebody looking for the Maki is probably looking for like the more uh, performance oriented. I don't uh, know because a lot of people we hear when we talk about the Maki is that they reference how good looking it is, right? Like for me, yeah. the aesthetics of the Maki are a really big deal. It's a beautiful car. I think it's really beautiful. So that's where the compa the comparison with this comes in because I think that this is pretty beautiful too in a different way yeah. right it's like it's uh, almost a little more grown up and you sit <laughs> up a lot higher so you do you, and i like it that. has about seven inches of ground clearance which is uh it's not like the uh like lexus uh toyota i think they're close to or slightly over eight inches um the maki -E, i believe is uh, just under six inches so it's pretty low this is just over six inches i think i will say that every time i open the door the curve looks a bit closer than i was expecting yeah the doors feels like it's really you know extends low yeah um and for whatever reason driving it feels like it feels bigger it to feels the, big yeah it feels way bigger than the mach -E. and you feel really high like i really like feeling this this upright i love an suv i just i love feeling like i'm above the road um this is my preferred driving style it's really cushy so i don't know what do you think is this a competitor with the mach -E? i again it's like especially price wise i mean this has like a lot of the little tiny bit of extra details that in a lot of ways justify the extra cost if you're you're interested and that's the uh stuff like uh the heads-up display ventilated seats which you can't get on the maki -E. 
um, has like the fingerprint reader for accessing the car, you know. So there's there's some things like that. Of course, you know, the, the, on the downsides, uh, the negatives are like, I can't believe we don't have wireless CarPlay and yeah. it's USB-C. So there's some minor things like that. The navigation isn't great. The screen is smaller, of course, but it's also far away, even though you can use I will the, be honest, so to me, that's the largest negative. I don't like that right now I'm driving, I can't touch the screen. I have to use the dial and all of this is really intuitive and easy to use. Uh, and I'm sure you'll get used to it, using the dial and using the buttons right here. But why can't I touch the screen? Yeah. Why don't I have that option as well? This is really cool and you don't get the screen dirty and you can do it easily while you're driving and not looking. I could just scroll. But it's hard um, to figure out. So like the, yeah. the dial makes it so you don't have to reach and touch, but yeah. it but does. But you can't. Like you gotta like stare at the screen because like you you move like the the cursor or what's highlighted yeah. by twisting the dial. So I'm like watching the screen and like where is the highlighted? Yeah. So it's not what a. What if I just want to stop and start easily right now? I just want to jab at it. Yeah. It's too far away, and that for me is the biggest negative, uh, in comparison with the Maki. The Maki is everything is easy to touch. It's right here. Um, yeah. Our first impressions driving the car is that it drives just as well as it looks and feels when you first get in it. It's like pretty darn smooth. It's not like Mercedes EQS smooth, but that's like twice as much. Uh, but this is like very, very smooth for this vehicle class. The one that we keep on thinking about that it compares most directly with is like the Lexus RZ450e. I think the ride is a lot better. Oh, so much better. It feels worlds apart. Like this feels like luxury. Uh, it feels beautifully cushioned. Uh, and of course the interior visuals don't hurt at all, which I think are fantastic. <laughs> it's really quiet. It has the active dampeners uh, for the suspension, not like a air suspension, like in the EQS, but like we we're going over potholes and everything right here. And not only is it like handling those in a smooth way, it is like, it it sounds quiet. Cause like a lot of times, you know how that just sort of like rattles through the, the cabin, very solidly, solidly built, um, just a very comfortable ride. And I'm in just comfort mode. Of course we have like the sport mode. We have a couple of curves coming up here. And what's really cool is like when I put it in the sport mode, the uh, side bolstering like comes in a little bit and squeezes me it's ready to like hold me in the seat more and, and we're you not, can turn that up if you don't like it yeah the, <laughs> like everything is adjustable um but it just yeah the, when, when we looked at this it doesn't feel like a, a sporty car it doesn't feel like comparing it to like the maki -E or like the ev6 gt for example but it's quick and i'm not <laughs> even using the the, the boost button i, I believe if you use the boost button, uh, it does zero to 60 in under four seconds, like 3.8 seconds, which is pretty fantastic. Uh, I, I've been impressed with it. Like it is a lot sportier than I was expecting. And then, you know, like as we, you know, I'm not going to really go crazy on these curves because we've got a lot of like uh, driveways and whatnot here, but it, it just handles really well. But also, you know, you shift it into the comfort mode and it feels really comfortable. Like, I, I, I think this is one of the better driving uh, EV SUVs that we've tested. Yeah, for sure. As a driver and a passenger, and you're actually in sport, but it still feels really comfortable. By the way, we should say that this is a road that we've done in the Lexus RZ450e. We've done it in actually every car that we've tested because it's not the best road. Uh, it's really curvy. It's uh, the uh, quality of the road is not great. Um, there's sometimes like dirt on the road and stuff like that. So it's a really fantastic road to test just how a car performs. And like Patrick said, this doesn't look performance. Uh, it doesn't seem to advertise that really, but if you want to get up and go, it's got it a lot, a lot. <laughs> and it's deceptively quick. Yeah. Um, we were on the freeway yesterday and the, the side bolstering started to squeeze in and I realized 
it does that when you hit 80 miles an hour and I'm like, whoops, going a little bit too <laughs> fast here. So it, it's deceptively quick, um, you know, going, you know, even like at the stoplights and everything, it's like I will take off and I'm like, oh, I just left everybody behind by accident. And it, it, it's just smooth and effortless. Um, and again, you know, all EVs are pretty darn quick like that, but I think this one, uh, the reason why it feels deceptively quick is it feels so quiet on the, the interior. And uh, another one that you might want to compare it with is the uh, Audi e-tron or Q8 e-tron now. I don't think it's quite as, as refined as that, but it's also probably about $20,000 cheaper depending on how you configure them. But this, this road, like Liv was saying, it has a lot of uneven pavement, things that can throw the suspension off. So it isn't like the perfect road for, you know, like really quick driving, but this is like a typical road that has like those little bumps and things as you're going around a curb that can make it just feel like a car feel loose. The car doesn't feel loose. Um, it doesn't feel heavy either. And of course it's a, it's a bit heavier than the gas version of this, uh, you know, GV70. This is the electrified. I wish they would change the name to like GV70E or something like that. But with this one, it feels very well tuned suspension, uh, you know, zipping around the corners. It's been great. Uh, handling those like bumpy roads, like with a curve feels really nice. Um, and then of course now we're not exactly on a freeway. So this is a great test for the uh, highway uh, driving assist or driver assist but I can go ahead and, and turn on some of these features and we'll just set it here. And it's a hands-on system, just like all the systems are, they're really nice, uh, whether it's from Lexus or Ford or Chevy or Tesla, they all perform fairly well, like on uh, highways, freeways like this. Um, we haven't had any complaints with it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop. It would slow down once it sees the traffic ahead, but all of these systems actually struggle when you are coming up to like a completely stopped vehicle. So I would recommend not necessarily using it on a road like this, or if you do be prepared to make those stops, it, it would eventually do it, but it, it, it's sort of like a hard break, you know, when it does that. Um, but if it's following somebody and we slow down for a stoplight, it'll bring us all the way to a stop. And the same thing with the stop and go traffic, it'll, come all the way to a stop. And then when the traffic starts flowing, it'll uh, pick up again as well. So uh, excellent driver's assistance features makes uh, our driving this week has been very comfortable. <laughs> all right, just had to have a little fun there. <laughs> that was using the boost button, which is down low on the steering wheel. It's fun to use, but really like I never found any need to use it under normal circumstances. That's more of a like, Hey, have you ever ridden in an EV? Let me show you how quick they are. Um, and it gives you like a boost of power for, I don't know, maybe five seconds or so. And then it dies right back off. So like, even if I don't move where my foot is on the pedal and I hit boost, all of a sudden it squeezes me and then the accelerator uh, stays in the same position, but all of a sudden, like I'm going faster and then the boost ends. And actually I just saw, I, first time I noticed there's actually a countdown timer. So if I hit boost, oh. oh, it's a 10 second boost. That's pretty good. And it shows when I'm getting into the boost power. Um, and then, you know, with the countdown timer. So it's, it, it increases the horsepower, uh, I believe from like 429 up to 483 for that short amount of time. It's, it'd be more important to see like what happens with the torque. So again, it's like, yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, you get this like a little bit of like, you know, uh, lurch forward as the accelerator mapping changes when it gets out of boost mode, but it's, it's a fun trick. Um, but just with the like 429 some horsepower uh, and all the torque that's normally available to you, I don't find it, you know, any reason like getting on the freeway or whatever, it hasn't been really like necessary. It's a fun trick to show people that have never been in an EV, like how quick they can be 
and it puts a smile on your face when you use it a lot of times, but uh, it, it is very powerful. So like I wouldn't necessarily hit it on a curb. Um, and also the button's gonna be like in a weird position for you. So, uh, but what do you guys think about the boost button? I don't know. The, it's, it's, it's an interesting way of having like that extra oomph, um, but like restricting it to when you know you're using it. I think it's a little weird cause it's uh, not uh, ergonomically where you might need it. Like if it was somewhere uh, in your 10 and two or something like that. Um, yeah, I would sort of like- being like just at the bottom of the steering wheel, it seems like it's encouraging it to be a little more mm -hmm. of a like, hey, look what I can do. Yeah, I, it would almost be like if it were up here. Instead, I got to move my hand down to a suboptimal position. Uh, the the one on the GV60, uh, as well as like the the Kia, they have like a boost button. I believe it's like down here, but it's like this round button. It's, it actually gets in my way, like when I'm like turning the steering wheel. Sometimes just the way my hands do it, I learn how to avoid it. This one is completely out of my way. In fact, I didn't notice it for like the first 20 minutes driving. And I was like, oh, there's a boost button down here. Let me, let me play with this. <laughs> it does actually make sense though that it's out of your way. So you have to be really intentional with the usage. Yeah. And it's, it's easy. Like, even though it's down here, it's easy to figure out exactly where it's at. And it, and it just blends in pretty seamlessly. So, uh, don't have a user profile set up. This is a press loaner. So we only have it for a week. But one of the things I don't like is like it does have a full one pedal mode and I have to turn that on every time I get in the car. I think if I have a profile, I can configure that um, correctly. Uh, it's not that big of a deal since we only have it for a week. Uh, but the paddles are how you adjust the amount of regen. So I was in one pedal, it was like max regen, and then I can completely take off uh, any regen when I let off the, the the accelerator so that it's basically completely in, in two pedal mode. Um, I like it max. So that's, that's what I'll keep it at. Oh, I see it's over there. Yeah. I like it not at all, which is what it defaults to, right? So it ha yeah, it yeah, ha has, so it's, it's just... off and then it does uh, one, two, th one, two, and three, and then one pedal mode, or they call it I pedal. Um, coming from the Maki, -E, I like having one pedal mode. Liv doesn't; she does two pedal. So it's uh, sort of up to you. There's um, a lot of controversy or debate in the EV community as to uh, which one is more e efficient driving around. Um, Porsche argues that it's not um, as efficient to have regen. It's better just to coast. Uh, other manufacturers say that like the regen helps with the efficiency. Uh, really, I think it's more about like if you drive really fast and stomp on the brake, you're not going to be as efficient. That's more important than how much regen you're getting. So, um, and, and coasting can be an efficient way of like extending your, your range as well. So anyways, uh, more leave it up to you and your personal preference. Don't don't worry about like which is the most efficient. I'm going to go ahead and do a U-turn. It does have the the cameras that uh, turn on when my blinker is on. So on the left dial, when I turn the left blinker on, that's where that one's at. And then on the right dial, uh, I'll turn the right blinker on and confuse some people out. But it's it's over here on the right, and then that one's over here on the left. Of course, this one also has the heads up display. So there's a lot of information like right here, very much like with an easy sight um, for driving the car around. Uh, I like the heads up display. It tells me like what my driver assistance stuff is doing. It shows um, sort of representations of cars as they are going past me when I have it uh, active. But it, you know, heads up displays are really cool. Um, some of the other things, you know, that we've noticed that we really uh, like are uh, that been missing from the mach -E. The ventilated seats have been nice. Yesterday it was really hot. That helped us out. Yeah, and the driver in this gets massaging seats, so that's nice for the driver. <laughs> yeah, there. Uh, it's the the side bolstering coming in is the the funniest one. I think uh, it just. It's a neat little thing that it does, and you can turn it on or off, like Liv mentioned. But uh, I, I just sort of like that. Like, all right, let's go. We're going to put it in the sport mode. And I should put it back in the 
Comfort. Comfort. Oh, that's uh, personalized mode. So you can adjust like steering, braking, acceleration, um, and the suspension. And you can set them individually. So you can set like exactly what you want. And then I just switched to comfort mode. Now, you probably can't tell on camera, but could you feel that like when I switch that it changes, like all of a sudden it's like, Oh yeah. Yeah. It, because the mapping of the, the pedal changes, like you get like a lurch forward or back yeah. or whatever. Certainly do. But I also get, um, when I switch into sport mode, my seat squeezes me a little and I actually sink down in it slightly. So it really holds me in place. And then there's an eco mode and eco mode is neat because when I cruise on the highway, it disengages the front motor when I'm set it like on a cruise control, uh, very smooth in that process. You don't really notice it. So that should help the range slightly. It isn't a huge thing to have both motors engaged uh, all the time for most EVs, but I think it probably gets them about 5% more range. And, you know, we, we talked about the range, but like driving around, it's fairly easy. Like we've been sort of zipping around right now. I'm getting 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour. Uh, we did some drives to San Diego, LA, mostly on the freeway. And we're getting up to like 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour, which isn't much difference than like the GT version of the Mach-E. Uh, of course, the big difference is, is the battery on this one is 77.4 kilowatt hours. So even though it's slightly more efficient than like a Mach-E GT, the battery is smaller. So the range is a bit less, but still not bad. Like comparing it to the RZ450E, that gave us a lot of range anxiety. Yeah, it certainly did. Now we're just uh, 194 miles. What percentage are we at? Well, I need to <laughs> back. Uh, 83% battery. Um, and this, I love the display here. Uh, well, I don't like where the display is. I love what's on the display. So there's some really cool stuff like the, uh, showing me like, you know, 83% uh, battery, 194 miles of range with the HVAC system on and 202 miles of range with the HVAC system off. Uh, there is actually, this is a cool little thing. EV charge transfer that's V down below. It says V2L. So you can uh, turn on and off the plug that's in the, in the rear compartment so that you can plug stuff into this. Uh, and actually, I think that might even be, you can plug into the uh, charge port and have the device. I think it's like $500. And then you can have like a plug outside the car as well. So we can swipe between forecast, compass, and our favorite so far, not calendar, and not navigation. Where is it? Uh, I think it's because I'm on the oh, EV thing. Oh, yeah. Our favorite is to put this there. So... Let me, let me just swap to... Apple and, and this is what's really interesting is... Oh, I don't have it plugged in. Oh, this is one of the things I forget is like... There's no wireless CarPlay. No wireless CarPlay. Android so Auto. I got to go old school. And and not only is it not wireless, but the cable connector, all of them on this car are USB-A, not USB-C. And there are two of them in there. And then that's where your uh, wireless charger is. But mm. either way, it'll have to be plugged in in order to be projecting. So now I think you can put it over there. So now we're in Apple CarPlay and we'll swipe, Maybe. swipe, swipe. No, <laughs> where's our, oh, there, there it, is. it is. Okay. So now we have the EV range there very quick. It's showing it over here, like on a, it looks like a, like almost a gas gauge, but it's um, just a bar. So as the driver like glancing down, it's like hard to tell exactly how much um, battery is left. It does show me that my range here is 192 miles, but it doesn't show me the actual battery percentage. If I want to see battery percentage, I got to like have that screen up over there, which, you know, I got used to. I think that's really good. Um, we do have access to CarPlay and Android Auto if you plug in. I haven't really messed with the navigation because we've tried it in Kia and Hyundai. It's an okay system. I know they've added uh, better route planning 
but uh, I just prefer using the uh, Apple CarPlay for the most part, and we haven't done a long road trip with this. So um, that's one of the, the, the weak spots on anything the Hyundai Motor Group has been the, the route planning slash EV route planning. Um, but, you know, if you're, if you're not concerned about that, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, hopefully that'll keep getting better. It is, you know, software updatable, so there's a lot of potential. I think we've conveyed that we like this EV. Uh, if you don't know, like uh, the way they do press vehicles is they will drop them off um, and we get to basically drive it for a week, get our impressions, Liv takes a bunch of photos, does her article for our girl's guide, and then we have to turn it back in. There's been some EVs where it's like, or some vehicles that we get, and I'm like, okay, that was a nice week. Uh, there's been we'll say maybe one that I was like, I'm sort of glad that they're picking <laughs> it up. Uh, this one, I'm like disappointed that they're picking it up tomorrow. It's like, it's been really nice having this, driving it around all week. I am too. And it's funny because the way you say that, it made me think, what are the other vehicles? And I will say the other vehicle that I was sad to say goodbye to was the Bolt. Bolt. Yeah, <laughs> I knew it. we can both say that. I really enjoyed the GV70 and I really enjoyed the Bolt. The Bolt is literally half the price of the GV70. You get a perfectly capable vehicle. It has a 400 volt charging system and it charges max 55 kilowatts. Yeah. So this one is an 800 volt charging system. Um, I'm not sure what the max charging is, but let's say if it's, it's, if it's uh, standard, two, it's about... 230s is like, it'll get up to 230 kilowatts. So about 18 minutes for 10 to 80, is that right? That's, Ish. yeah, something like yeah. that. Um, so... Um, our two favorite vehicles so far, vastly different. If you want, um, you know, uh, a cheaper vehicle and more bang for your buck, the Bolt is a great option. But if you want this or anything luxury like this or anything um, just fully capable, because I don't think that there's anything that this car isn't really capable of. This is a great one. It's it's. Uh like the range is a little on the lower side, but it's yes. not um, down like the RZ450E was just under 200 miles of range. And it like it triggered our range anxiety a bit because we had like family in town and we were running around a lot. This one, uh, it's it's lower. It's not as high as uh, some other EVs that are out there, uh, including the Mach-E. Like you can get a Mach-E up to 314 miles of range, I believe it is. Uh, so it's not as high as those, but it's, it was good enough, you know, for what we were, uh, looking for. Um, if we were taking a road trip to Vegas, I wish we could have done that in this car. It'd be really it interesting been comfortable too, because the range might've been less. We might've had to make two stops instead of one, but they would have, they would have been quick stops. Hopefully. That's uh, true. But the one thing that we do want to make note, uh, a lot of people are, you know, very excited by these 800 volt cars, mostly the Kia Hyundai Genesis range. Um, they charge really fast, but you have to have a good 350 kilowatt charger for that to happen. And they're, they're becoming more common, but if you, you know, some of the EA stations, for example, they have like one 350 and if somebody's using it, you're going to take 36 minutes to charge instead of 18 minutes or so. Well, also you said, uh, let's say it would be two quick stops. No, because I don't stop quick. <laughs> so it would be just two 30 minute stops at least, right? Because I'm going to go to the bathroom, I'll do my other things. It's going to take me 30 minutes. So well, we like to stretch our legs. So yeah. Yeah. Um, but this has been like, seriously, it's been one of our favorite EVs. Again, you know, like we could compare it to like the EQS 580 SUV. But it's also, you know, like when you're testing out these cars, it's like in the back of your mind, like how much does it cost? Or at least we try to keep that in mind because, yeah. you know, we, we try not to say like, uh, the I, I would like to test a non-prestige version of this because I don't like saying like, oh, it's just like another $5,000, get the prestige because it's another $5,000. And it's $6,800. Um, and there are certain features that we kind of would have no idea how they're different. Like the instrument cluster, I think the default is eight inch. Okay. Um, so and it's slightly, like a bit digital, smaller. digital analog or something. So it'll be a bit smaller. So there's certain features that um, cost $6,800. Uh, the paint job, by the way, is $1,500. It's, it's pretty amazing. It's, yeah, it's but, hard not to... Yeah. But that's half the price of the Leaf. Yeah. Well, the Leaf is four, so... 
Oh, that's but anyways, awesome. yeah. We're borrowing our used leaf. Um, <laughs> so, it, it, you know, it is a lot to, to keep in mind. Um, I, I think this does have a lot of intangibles, as we keep saying. It's like you get in and you feel like, wow, this is really nice. And you walk up to it with the, like, the white brake calipers. Uh, it just, it feels not next level, but like a step above. It's like it has it, that little... Mm. It does. Uh, by the way, like, <laughs> when they dropped it off, uh, I was putting up Halloween decorations and the guy drove up and I literally turned and went, dang, like quietly under my breath because it's that kind of car. And my dad, when he walked up, the first thing he said was, this looks like money. Yes. Right? Yeah. And it's it's funny because we're comparing it to the Mercedes EQS and we're comparing it to the Mach-E. There's a big price disparity there. There's a huge difference, right? Yeah. Mercedes EQS is... Um, well over a hundred thousand dollars. The one that we that tested was like one fifty. Yeah. Now, now going back to like the RZ four fifty E from Lexus, that's sort of what I think is like one of the bigger competitors, competitors to this. I think it's like uh, sixty four thousand. The one that we tested. Um, that didn't feel like money. It didn't. You look yeah, at it, it or didn't. Touch it. it felt like a upgraded Toyota. Um, <laughs> but this feels really good. And then uh, comparing this to like the e-tron, the e-tron I feels just like that much, you know, uh, above this, and it has like the air suspension, so it rides really well. I think it's a bit quieter than it's this. It's more performance oriented too. Like this one is no slouch, but the e-tron is like performance oriented and design as well. Not the e-tron GT, the big e-tron. Oh yeah. Yes. Okay. This, the the one that Alyssa has. Her dog carrier. Her dog carrier. <laughs> yes, that's his. So, uh, and I think it's bigger. So anyways, it's, you know, go out, test drive these. Uh, if you can't find one and you want to order it, uh, this is very similar to the ICE version, the, the gas version. So you can go at least check out one of those and see how it feels. The V6 is um, quick, but not as quick as this. This is very quick. Uh, so that that's our advice for like any of these. Like we try to give you our input, but... Really, it's like you need to go and, and sit in these. But, uh, you know, just our impressions is like this is a fantastic EV. Uh, the range isn't quite up there, but with the fast charging, it's great. And if you're going to do like us, like we, the, the one day, like we drove from um, uh, Oceanside up to Santa Ana, down to where did La, we Jolla. Go? La Jolla, that's yeah. right, to La Jolla and back home. And I know I'm just, you know, naming <laughs> places you don't know. We drove up 60 miles, 60 miles, and down 80 miles, yep. and then up 30 miles. Yeah. Is and that about it? Yeah. 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 And what, how many miles is that? <laughs> I know, I'm like adding it up. Up like, 60, down 80. We, we used a lot of the battery, but we were still doing fine. fine. Yeah. And uh, to Santa Ana and back, like in the Mach-E uh, GT Performance Edition, we'll get uh, about 2.6, 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour. This, I think we were doing about 2.8, 2.9, so it's actually slightly more efficient. Again, the battery's smaller, so that's where the, the less range comes in. But I didn't have the range anxiety. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are doing a lot of road trips, again, like right now, Tesla is the best option with the supercharger network. Uh, Genesis just announced they will be doing NACs and having NACs adapters, meaning you can charge at Tesla superchargers at some point. Um, it'll probably be late next year before that happens, late 2024, I should say. Uh, some of the other manufacturers, like Ford, is saying they're going to have their adapter out early 2024. And the reason for that, I believe, is that they're having some, um, I wouldn't say difficulties, but there's some compatibility issues between the 800 volt system and getting a good speed out of the superchargers. So I think that's why that's going to take a little bit longer, but eventually that'll be available. But uh, overall, again, fantastic EV. Yeah, super fantastic. Thumbs up. I think this and the Bolt, I just think that's really interesting. Like there's something there and that those are our favorite EVs so far next to the Mach-E. So I, and, and I think the commonality is like we look at uh, value for money. So it could be a Heavily. really, really, really yeah. nice car. But if we think it's like if it's three hundred thousand dollars, we were like, well, that's just overpriced. Yeah. Um, so I think this is good value for seventy five thousand. The Bolt is good value for what was it like? I think the one we tested was thirty six thousand is very is the red line edition. So I think it's value for money. I think those, you know, 
it, it's sort of interesting saying this has value for money. When <laughs> the Mach-E is cheaper, the it's Lexus is well, cheaper, the uh, Model Y is way cheaper. And you see where the money went, right? Like, if you get into this vehicle and you feel like you can see where all that 70000 All the little whatever, extra went. Yeah, where that went. Just like the Bolt, it's 35000 whatever. You see like, wow, this has a lot of things I want. I see where the money went. Sometimes I get in a car and I'm like, this is the brand. Like the money went to the brand as opposed to the features. And I greatly value being able to see where the money went in the features and in, in your experience as opposed to the name. And I should note that um, the, the week prior to this, we had a Tesla Model Y, which is also falling into, you know, some people call it the premium SUV EV category. Um, this is just like whole whole another level. The Tesla has a supercharger network and the Tesla software and stuff. So there's some advantages to it, but it doesn't feel premium to me. It doesn't, but obviously the Teslas are getting price drops. So that drops it like into a different class of vehicle. Yeah, like a third less. Yeah, than this, it's so. a totally different class of vehicle. And then you get back into like, where do, do you see where the money went? And it's a better price range maybe for that. Well, anyways, yeah. I think you guys get our point. Uh, we didn't mean to get into like a rant or long-winded discussion, <laughs> but we really are trying to like show you why we like this. So uh, I think the, the best thing is to thank our patron members or Patreon members. Uh, we are maybe now, maybe sometime soon, but we we're going to do, or we're going to try out YouTube memberships. So if oh, you're yeah. interested in that, uh, check below. We may have that active now. If not very soon, we're going to activate that. Um, hopefully that's just something that we can give you guys some insider treats and info or something like that. We'll try to make it worth your while. Yeah. But, uh, no matter what, thank you guys for supporting us. This is actually the first video we filmed since we hit 10,000 subscribers. Really? So thank you to everyone that subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, please just go ahead, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you get notified as well. Um, but I should say, like, we're going to, you know, scroll the Patreon members down if I haven't already. I think we did already. We already did. We can we do it haven't. again. We'll do it twice. <laughs> That'll be a first, too. Um, but here they are again. Whisper. Uh, again? We'll do it again. Yeah, we'll do it twice. Okay. Whisper, and wait, engaged, we said that unrivaled. we were going to put it in the beginning of the video previously. So some other video. Some other video. The beginning. Um, I do have a quick note. Uh, being in the GV70 makes me think that we should test drive the GV60. Again. I'm really excited about that. No, you you drove it. We only had half an hour. It was a first I, drive. I need it. I want a week with it. So let us know if you agree with that down below. Um, regarding hitting 10,000, this is still shocking and amazing to us. We work really hard doing this. This is a hobby. Uh, we have day jobs. We have side jobs. Uh, we really work hard at this, but it's because it's a passion of ours and it's really rewarding. It's and a dream part come of, true. Huh? It's a dream come true. We get it to review video true. cars. Like, it's so cool. Yeah, and also the community around this is so amazing. So it's not just an achievement for us. It's it's something that you're a part of. It would be nothing without you guys. So thank you so much, truly, for watching, liking, and subscribing, whatever, interacting with us. We appreciate you so much. And just remember that whatever you drive, whether it's a GV70 or a Mach-E or a Bolt or an EV or not, enjoy the ride. Bye. And always be charging. Always be charging. ABC. <laughs> Bye.